Aloha and shalom. So we are here for the first quarter activation. We just had the new moon last week, and so the new moon is always about a new beginning. Now we're one week in, so we're one week into this new cycle. For those of you who are new to these videos, they don't actually have anything to do with the moon other than the fact that we use the moon as a measurement of time. What the moon is showing us is what's going on inside of us. And really, if you look to nature, there are signs everywhere to show you what's happening inside of you, of yourself, because you are, we are one with nature. So the moon, whatever shape it's showing us, is giving us a hint as to what part of the process we are at right now with our own journey. So again, the first quarter is just we're one week into this four week cycle. It's new, we're just starting to understand what the lesson of the month is. As usual, I am transmitting live from Sedona, Arizona, magical place of the red rocks and the vortexes or the vortices. Where are you tuning in from? Where in the world are you? Drop a comment and let us know where you're tuning in from. You guys, these videos have been going on for years now, literally every single week for years. And it's been amazing to watch this community form around the activations. I just love you guys. And this is my favorite part of the week. So check it out. As everybody's letting us know where they're tuning in from in the comments, that's the web of light that we're creating around the world right now. So in order to tune into the energy right here and now, just be present, just breathe. First and foremost, just breathe and let go of whatever else is taking up space in your mind that's keeping you from being present. Okay, so whatever is, has been on your mind all day, maybe all week, it's taking up space. So at least for now, just set it aside so that we can receive this information in a way that's most receptive. And then after this activation, if you want to welcome those repetitive thoughts back in, those, that cyclical thinking, then go right ahead. But for now, we're emptying, clearing, opening. You can picture yourself holding hands with everybody around the world, everybody who's tuning in right now. You can picture yourself here right now with me pulling these cards, shuffling the cards. You can see yourself in your mind's eye shrinking and jumping into the deck. Whatever you want to do, play with it. Imagination is everything. So good to see you guys tuning in from all over. If you're just tuning in, let us know in the comments where you're tuning in from. Where in the world are you? Thank you, archetypes, faces of the one in advance for this message that you're going to bring us here now, for this message that we together are uniting in, that we together are calling in here now. <clears throat> okay, these are the two questions that I pulled. What is it that we need to let go of? There's something as I was shuffling, I was seeing that there's something that's keeping us from being fully in our power right now to be able to progress in the best way possible. So what is that thing? What's that project that we have right now to really focus on to be able to free up the energy that we need to move ahead? And who is the ally as we do it? That's the second question. So starting with what needs to be let go of. Woo. And we start off the reading with a major arcanum card. Justice, AKA balance. And this is a little winged turtle that I drew in there. It's actually from the Brotherhood of Light deck, the inspiration for that. And I kind of just combined uh, that symbol with this deck. And I switched the number here because if you guys uh, haven't seen my manipulation videos before, I talk a lot about manipulations within the tarot. And this is why, the manipulation is why I've changed the number here. If you want to know more, I have videos about this on my YouTube channel or just feel free to reach out, private message me, and I can give you more information about why I changed the number on this card because it's very important. So if this is the thing that we're needing to let go of, I'll tell you right away what I see, that right now the judgments are too harsh. We're trying too hard 
to be in this role when it should be effortless. You see, all of these characters in the tarot are aspects of our own selves. They're aspects within the universal mind. Uh, they're actually effortlessly embodied when we begin to understand them, form a relationship with them, and allow them to work their magic through us. Uh, but when we are not conscious of their attributes and their characteristics and their frequencies, and we don't have that understanding of who they are, and we don't have a relationship with these archetypes, then we kind of embody them in a way that's unconscious, sloppy, sometimes dangerous, um, often futile, often the way that we embody these archetypes because we don't have an awareness of who they really are or how to really embody them, we will embody their characteristics in ways that completely are futile, meaningless, or like I said, in ways that are dangerous, in ways that work against us even. So it's important to have an understanding of who these characters are. Ask me about my book. My book is literally about this because this is my purpose, is to teach this, is to share this, okay? So it's to, the main goal is to understand these archetypes, who they are, how they are a part of you, and how to effortlessly allow them to work through you, okay? So bringing it back to the question, this is what we need to let go of right now. We're trying too hard to wear this hat, to be that, that figure of justice. And the thing is, you shouldn't have to try. We're not here to judge. First of all, we can't help but judge because as we perceive our reality, as the observer perceives reality through the, these human eyes, we're constantly judging because we're constantly perceiving our reality and making associations within the mind. We're literally defining our reality as we go. It's hopefully we're doing that consciously and not entirely unconsciously with zero awareness, with zero presence. Okay, so what we've been doing too much of is trying too hard, judging too much. Okay, if you really want to wear this hat in a way that's organic and in a way that you, you, me, we are all meant to wear this hat, it's about, first of all, starting within. That's where the journey always begins, within. How are you being fair, being just, or being in balance with your own self? Start with yourself first. Don't worry about everybody else around you and how everybody else is doing things First, start with you, get right with you, because most likely the imbalances that you're picking up on in your outside reality are a reflection of something going on within yourself. There's a reason you're being attracted to those, those uh, situations. There's a reason you are being called to judge those things. They're like popping out. They're like, they seem to be at the forefront of all of reality for you. And you have an eye for it because it's trying to tell you something. The message is not so simple as, look at this imbalance over here and judge it. What's the opportunity there though? Okay, let's look, a little, let's, let's look at it a little differently. If there's an opportunity that appears to be calling for your judgment at first, you might want to observe that and say, okay, I'm feeling like I want to judge this situation or this person or what's happening here. But then I'm going to remember in that moment to call in my, my fullest presence, my fullest awareness and say, what, what is the opportunity for growth here? For the one, not just for me, but for the one. Is this judgment going to serve the one? Is it going to serve me? Is it going to serve all? Is there a reason for me to judge this right now? Like, what can I learn from this? What can we learn from this? And how can I make sure that as I'm, I'm pointing out the imbalances or I'm pointing out um, who is doing something wrong or what's not quite right, as I'm, you know, having this eye for all these imbalances right now, I'm making sure that I don't get stuck in that role where I forget all of my other archetypes and I forget all of my other duties in life and all of a sudden now I'm hyper-focused on being this judge, judgment of what is right, what is balance, what is an image of balance and what is not. You don't wanna get stuck wearing any one hat. You don't want to get stuck in any one archetypal embodiment. That's immediately a red flag to show you it's time to change your hat. It's time, it's time to balance things out a little bit. That's the irony with this card being the thing that needs to let go, be let go of. Everything already has a natural balance. How can you tune into that and not try to micromanage what is already perfect? Because the divine design is what you see coming through all of reality. You see it in nature. You see it in you and me. It's in everything. That balance is at the center of all things. So how can we just allow for that to naturally be? 
first of all, the more we are aware of it, the more we will allow it because the more we will see it and the more we will allow it to grow. With, with simply putting our awareness on it, it grows. So that's the first step is acknowledging that everything's already in balance. It's like chill out. Even when you, even when you notice something is imbalanced, you don't need to move from your center to call out that imbalance. Because now you're actually imbalanced because now you threw yourself at the situation because you were so quick to judge. And now if you look at the overall picture of things, you're actually creating more of a, a situation, more of an imbalance. So how can we, first of all, already acknowledge that there is a balance behind all things? Chill out. Know that when things seem off or wrong or not in, in balance before we judge it. And it's okay to judge. Judging is not wrong. It's how we learn. It's how we grow. Don't deny that aspect of who you are. Okay, but when you're, when you're looking at the situation, it's all about what you're going to get from it. What is the intention? Are you learning from it? Okay, this is what you want to ask yourself first. When you're about to judge something, be present and ask yourself. Remember your mission and ask yourself, is this going to serve or not? And first of all, I need to remember to check myself with my emotions, right? Because so often when we're in that situation where we see something that's out of balance, we do want to call it out. We do want to jump at it and we do want to attack it. But the thing is we need to remain in our center. And before we proceed to the judgment or the lesson or whatever it is that we're going to do, we first want to check in and say, hey, chill out. <laughs> okay, first of all, this is an impermanent situation happening here. First and foremost, this is all going to pass. This too shall pass. That's first of all. And then second of all, you want to remind yourself, everything's in perfect order. So even when something seems so wrong, I have to acknowledge that there are no mistakes. There is nothing outside of divine order. And then we can proceed and progress with the situation from a place that is appropriate, from a foundation that's solid. Because if we don't first acknowledge that everything's in, in perfect order, that on, on some deeper level, everything is an unfolding according to divine order, if we don't first acknowledge that, we allow the opportunity for our emotions to get the best of us, for our emotions to have us act out of control we say things, we do things that we regret. And that's when we become too much in that role. Like I'm the one who decides what's right and wrong. I'm the one who decides truth from untruth. First of all, all things contain within them some truth, but some truths are partial. And we're not the ones who wrote the script. We together are the one that wrote, writes, and will continue to forever write the never-ending script. And those, those laws that are contained within this scroll, this, this script that we're all, you know, the living word, a part of this, you know, living scroll, those laws are, are, are written into our DNA. They're a part of nature. They're back of all things. So we can't sit here and act like we made those laws and we know them better than the one, because we don't. We don't. So the real justice system, the real system of laws is built into our very DNA. And they're extracted from the awareness that everything is one. When you start with the understanding that everything is one, from there, the other laws come into place. For example, the, the Ten Commandments, right? I shall not steal, for example. You literally cannot steal because when you remember that everything is one, you can't steal from self. And then you realize that you were living a lie or living this delusion so when you look at these laws from that perspective, it's not I shall not, it's I literally cannot because everything is one. Okay, so when we understand that we're one, there are laws that, that become obvious in how we need to interact with each other and how we engage with each other. And these laws are reflected in the laws of energy um, and in the, in the hermetic laws as well. All the different systems of, of morals and ethics and these laws, the Ten Commandments, they're all pointing to the same thing. And that is what we should rely on. Those laws, those truths that are universal, that are timelessly applicable. We have to stop acting like we know that there's some other truth. There's only one truth and everything should be held to that standard, not to some you know, standard that we wanna set for some selfish purpose, for some self-fulfilling purpose. So remember, 
right now we need to let go of this a little bit. Stop trying so hard to micromanage what is already perfect. And the next one, who is our ally while we do this? Seven of Cups. And Cups is the suit of the water element and the suit of the heart and emotions. And this is all about making sure that our emotions aren't misguiding us. That we are not falling into some delusional concept. That we're not chasing the wrong things. That we're not putting our blood, sweat, and tears into the wrong relationships. Into the wrong visions. Into the wrong dreams. We want to make sure that we're not just daydreaming, but that we're working consciously, actively to make our dreams a reality. Okay, so again, this is the ally for this one, so let's connect it. What we need to let go of right now is being too judgy, trying too hard to balance things that are already balanced in their own way. Just letting things unfold. Another part that I feel coming through is we're rushing too much. There's this thing we need to let go of, and the thing is we are rushing too quickly to make these decisions, to make these judgments. That's the big part of it. Just slow down. And so this being the ally, and this being the thing that we need to let go of, is telling us that if we focus on this, this will be made a little bit easier. So if you really ground in right now, check in with your heart, and ask yourself, what are... What are those relationships that need my energy and my presence and my love the most right now? Where have I been maybe uh, daydreaming a little too much? Where do I need to ground in more? Okay, because if you do this and you focus on this, it will humble you. Okay, because you're bringing your energy to inward to yourself. You're bringing it back to center. You're focused on things that really matter. You're getting your head out of the clouds and you're grounding in your body and making decisions about what, what do I need to, like, where have I been giving my energy to certain people that I need to maybe pull some of that back and redistribute it to other people? Okay, so this is getting you into your own mind, focusing on yourself and your relationships. It's allowing you to take accountability for the relationships you currently have. It's giving you the responsibility of deciding how to reconfigure the way that you distribute your energy okay and your love your your effort your time it's also going to get you into your heart because you're getting into your feelings you're getting into that visionary aspect of yourself that's tied to your feelings that's going to ultimately manifest those visions because your feelings are the power behind the manifestation so you see, as you're focused on this, this is your ally for a reason, as you're focused on this, as you prioritize this work, okay, getting real with your dreams, not letting go of your dreams, but making sure that the ones you're after are realistic to you because all things are, are, are possible. So the key is knowing, it, it, does it feel possible to you? You have to be honest with yourself, okay? So that's the work right now. That's the work right now. Not forgetting your dreams, but getting clear with what they are and then doing what you have to do to ground in and act and manifest those dreams. And if you're so absorbed in doing this, you're not going to have time to be judging everyone and everything. This becomes easy. This just happens as a byproduct of this. Okay. So the things that we need to let go of, the thing that we need to let go of this judgmental aspect of ourselves, the overly controlling need to find the balance and need to make the balance, need to call out where there isn't balance, all that, we need to tone that down. And it's effortlessly possible when we use this archetype as the ally. Get into your heart. The cup is the grail. It's the heart. Get into your heart. Get into your feelings. And check in with your relationships. What relationships can you focus more on? Which ones do you need to pull back from? Where are you putting your emotion into? What are you putting your feelings into? What are you putting your heart into? And that doesn't have to be a relationship. It could be a project. It could be any situation. Or it could be a, a relationship with an animal as well. You got to really open up your mind. Okay, so where are you pouring your heart energy into? And is it, are you good? Or do you need to reconsider how you're doing that? Do you need to redistribute the energies? Okay. 
when you really tune into this, you recognize it gets you into your heart, it gets your mind back into focus with your own stuff so you can stop being overly controlling about everyone and everything else. Okay, I just want to make sure we're complete with these two cards. Well, I'm kind of curious about where we're headed. Should we see? Should we see what is coming with the full moon next week? What's a little like hint of what's to come so that we can begin to seed that manifestation right now? Ooh, yay, I'm glad we did that. So another major arcanum card, the star. And I'm going to I'm going to make a real cool connection for you guys here. So the, the star is number 17, and when you reduce the double-digit cards to a single digit, you get the key note of that card, and it tells you which card is connected to this one. So 17, 1, 7. 1 plus 7 is 8. The key note of the star is actually justice, a.k.a. balance. And I was going to mention this before, so I'm glad it came up, because um, perfect timing. Again, nothing is outside of divine order. So the reason that the balance is hidden within the star, and I'll try to put this as simply as possible, you guys, the star comes right after the tower, okay? It's like the tower falls, all that was not sustainable came crashing down, and nothing is left but the star, which is you, okay? So the star is, if you think, <laughs> all the cards are connected, so it gets a little trippy for those of you who are not uh, in the study of tarot. Um, but if you recognize on the hermit card, he's carrying a lantern and the star inside is the light and it's the light that guides the way, okay? This is that star that the hermit is carrying or that the sage is carrying. He's carrying the star and the star is the light that's inside of you, okay? So when the tower falls, card 16, we then move to the 17, nothing's left but that light, that light of hope inside. It's like your heart is that star, is that light, is that guiding force. And what is inside that star, heart, light? What is really inside there at the center? Balance. Eight. If you turn an eight on the side, what is it? Infinity. Infinity is that eternal balance of all things. And this is why balance is the keynote of the star card. Because the star that guides the way contains within it the law, the laws of balance. And that law, okay, when, when that law shines, when that, that code is in alignment, when that code is activated in your heart, your heart becomes like a star that shines. And this is why you see people who are, are healthy, mind, body, soul, you see them literally glowing. And this is why you've seen in many uh, religious paintings, you've seen an aura or a halo around these beings. And you know it. You know a healthy person when you see them. They glow. And that's because they've activated this balance within themselves. And that balance is what is so beautifully shining through them. So this is why balance is the keynote of the star card. The star of hope that guides the way is really a, a shining manifestation of this internal balance. So it's really cool that we're wrapping it up with this one. The third card, what's to come, is the star. And I totally can see that for next week if we ace these these challenges that we're facing right now this week then by next week the time of the full moon will be in this place where we are coming back to our center where we remember we are the star of the show in our reality that we are the center and that we have to focus on ourselves and work from the inside out so we're getting to that point and the way that we're going to get there is by stopping this micromanagement of <laughs> what is already so perfectly in divine order right we remember we remember who we really are the star we're going to stop that. We're going to get right with our dreams, our visions, our relationships, and start putting our heart where it's going to be successful for all beings. So as we do that, we return to the self. And as I said before, the reason we're needing to let go of this right now is because we're overdoing it, okay? We're becoming too judgy. We're becoming... We're call, we're, we think it's our duty now to call out all of the imbalances that are all around. However, that looks silly first and foremost because we already know that even behind everything that's seemingly imbalanced, there is, in fact, a balance. Right? So as we stop doing this, we remember the real truth, what real balance is. 
and we allow it to shine forth from ourselves effortlessly. So that's really cool confirmation that this is ahead, you guys. This is showing us the potential we have to right now stop trying to micromanage everything, recognize the perfection and the divine design back of all things, and allow that to shine through us because that's where we're headed. All you need to focus on is your heart and where you're pouring your love into. If you want to know more about these archetypes, both of my books are published now. There's uh, The Royal Path 1 and The Royal Path 2. The first book is all about the main archetypes of the deck, such as these two that actually came up as two of the three cards today. The Major Arcanum, aka The Major Secrets. Book number two is on the Minor Arcanum, the other 56 cards of the deck. And... If you have any questions about my book, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Thank you so much for all of your amazing feedback from those of you who have bought the book. I'm appreciating the reviews and the awesome pictures when you receive my book. I love getting messages from you all. It really brightens up my day. And um, what else? I do have my tarot lessons still available for anyone who wants to go deeper with occult symbolism and the tarot and Kabbalah. If you're not yet already a part of our private groups on Facebook, there are two one is called The Royal Path, and one is called Shabbat Crew, S-H-A-B-B-A-T Crew. And in that group, I post toward the end of the week about the current Torah story and the mystical import. Um, and we post about Jewish mysticism and uh, numerology, all kinds of interesting stuff in there. So go ahead and join if that interests you. And... I think that's it, you guys. I'm so happy to be hanging out with y'all today. Um, I worked all day, so I'm buzzing. Thank you all for being patient and keeping up with my hummingbird energy. I'm sending you all so much love from Sedona, Arizona, land of the red rocks. Aloha. And I'll see you on Friday in Shabbat Crew.